In the previous videos, we have studied the transverse elliptic and transverse magnetic modes in rectangular waveguides. Uh, now, in this video, we are going to summarize all the results that we obtain, or the results which we obtain uh, for transverse elliptic and transverse magnetic modes in such rectangular waveguides. Effectively, we have uh, some uh, quantities or some coefficients which are valid for any type of waveguides or closed waveguides like uh, the propagation wave number of the medium inside the waveguide this is omega square root mu epsilon and this is valid for both transverse elliptic and transverse magnetic modes uh, the cut of wave number kc uh, for rectangular waveguide in general is a square root m by over a squared plus n by over b squared this is for both transverse elliptic and transverse magnetic mode but in the case of transverse elliptic mode the lowest mode is one zero mode in the case of transverse magnetic the lowest mode is one one mode but in general for any m n mode the same cut of frequency for the transverse elliptic and transverse magnetic modes are the same uh, effectively this is called degenerate modes and we will discuss what it means by degenerate modes after what uh, the propagation constant beta equals the square root of k squared minus kc squared and this also the same for transverse elliptic and transverse magnetic modes uh, the cutoff wavelength, lambda cutoff, is 2 pi over uh, kc, or 2 pi over the cutoff wave number. The guided wavelength equals 2 pi over beta. The phase velocity equals omega over beta. The dielectric attenuation coefficient alpha d for the case of transverse electric mode is k squared tan delta over 2 beta for transverse magnetic modes is k squared tan delta over 2 beta 2 okay actually these coefficients as I said are the same for any closed or uh, any uh, waveguide structure except the cut of wave number here this cut of wave number is especially for rectangular waveguide but the phase velocity, the guided wavelengths, the dielectric attenuation coefficient, uh, all of this stuff are the same for any waveguide structure. Okay? Uh, for the transverse electric modes, the field components are HZ, EX, EY, HX, and HY. But for the transverse magnetic component, we have EZ, EX, EY, HX, and h1 and these are the field components that we already uh, drive it for both the transverse electric and transverse magnetic components okay the wave impedance for the transverse electric mode zte is k eta over beta uh, the wave impedance for the transverse magnetic mode is beta eta over k okay uh, the attenuation coefficient, the conductor loss attenuation coefficient alpha c, as a function of the frequency, can be presented for the different modes in this graph. It can be noted here that the transverse electric one zero mode has a lowest cut of frequency. We have two cases here. Case one when B equals A when the width equals the length of the waveguide section and the other case when B equals A over 2 it can be noted that uh, the attenuation coefficient is slightly affected by the value of B here but in general if B is greater we have less attenuation coefficient on the other hand this is the attenuation coefficient due to the transverse magnetic 1-1 mode. It can be noted 
that the attenuation coefficient of the transverse magnetic mode when B equal A is greater than the attenuation coefficient of TE10 mode. This means that the lowest attenuation coefficient that we can obtain from rectangular waveguide is the attenuation coefficient of the dominant mode TE10. Also, it can be noted here that below this frequency, the transverse magnetic 1 1 mode cannot be propagating. This means that at the range from this frequency to this frequency, the only propagating mode is TE10 mode. And this also has significant importance that we are interested in operating the waveguide for a single mode because every mode is propagating with different phase velocity and as we will see by the end of this chapter it will be propagating with different group velocity so it would be preferred to use a single mode waveguide to use a single mode waveguide means that uh, we should be operating at a frequency greater than the cutoff frequency of TE10 mode and below the cutoff frequency of 1 1 mode or the following mode. Okay. As an example, consider a lens of Teflon filled cover K band rectangular waveguide have dimensions A equal 1.07 centimeters and B uh, equals 0.43 centimeters. It is required to find the cutoff frequencies of the first five propagating modes. And if the operating frequency is 15 GHz, find the attenuation due to the dielectric and conductor loss. Knowing that the Teflon has epsilon R equal 2.08 and 10 delta equals 0 0.004. Okay. Here we have the value of A and B. The cutoff frequency is obtained as 1 over 2 by square mu epsilon. 1 over square root mu naught epsilon naught is C, which is the speed of light in free space. So 1 over square root mu epsilon is C over square root epsilon R. C equals 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8. And epsilon r in the present case is 2.08. So the value of the cutoff frequency of mn mode is c over 2 by square root epsilon r multiplied by square root m by over a squared plus n by over b squared. Okay. Now we are going to apply the different values starting from 10, which is te10 mode. 10 mode will have a cutoff frequency 9.72 GHz. If I'm talking about 20 mode would be M equal to and N equal 0 and this could be only transverse electric because there is no transverse magnetic as N equal 0. So TE20 mode it would be 19.44. TE01 mode here m equals 0 and n equal 1 would be 24.19 and finally 1 1 mode which can be te or tm would be 26.07 and 210 2 1 mode 2 1 mode m equal 2 and n equal 1 would be 31.03 gigahertz these are the cutoff frequencies of the lowest or the lowest five cutoff frequencies uh, for the different modes inside such rectangular waveguide. Okay. Now, this said that if the operating frequency is 15 gigahertz, 15 gigahertz is greater than 9.72 and less than 19.44. This means that at 15 gigahertz, the only propagating mode is T10 mode. It is required to obtain the attenuation due to the dielectric and conductor loss. The dielectric is common. The dielectric alpha D is 
k squared tan delta over 2 beta and beta in this case is obtained as k squared minus uh, kc squared k squared is omega uh, omega uh, square root mu epsilon omega square root mu epsilon is 2 by f square epsilon r over c so in this case we are going to use f as 15 gigahertz and epsilon r is 2.08 and the value of a is 1.07 centimeter it is 1.07 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2 from this we can obtain the value of k uh, sorry from this we can obtain the value of beta and from the value of beta and by using tan delta and the value of k we can obtain the attenuation coefficient due to the dielectric material okay so this is the value of k 2 by f square root epsilon r over c squared tan delta is 0.004 and beta we already obtained beta as 345.1 this is the value of the attenuation coefficient due to the dielectric material in never per meter. If I'm multiplying it by 8.6, I can obtain it in terms of dB per meter. To convert it from never per meter to dB per meter, we multiply it by the coefficient 8.6. Alright? On the other hand, the surface resistance R is equal to square root omega mu naught over 2 sigma. Omega is 2 by the frequency. Mu naught is the free space permeability, which is 4 by multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7. And sigma here is the conductivity of the cover. For the cover, the conductivity is 5.8 multiplied by 10 to the power 7. From this, we obtain the surface resistance R is which is 0.032 ohms. Now, the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss for the TE10 mode, because the only mode that propagate at 15 gigahertz here is TE10 mode, the attenuation coefficient is R surface over A square, A, A cube, B, beta, K, eta. K is 2 by F square root epsilon over C. Eta here, which is eta naught over square root epsilon r. So it is 120 y over square root epsilon r. Epsilon r is the dielectric constant of the teflon, which is 2.08. So r surface, a cube, b, a is 1.07 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2. b is 0.43 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2. Beta, we have already 10 beta. K is 2 by F square root epsilon R over C. And eta, as I mentioned, is eta naught 120 by over square root epsilon R. Multiplied by 2B by squared plus A cube K squared. By doing this algebraic relation, we obtain that the value alpha c is 0.05 never per meter by multiplying it by 8.6 we obtain it as 0.434 db per meter so this is a conductor loss or the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss and this is the attenuation coefficient due to the dielectric loss in this case as the frequency 15 gigahertz where the operating mode is te10 mode Okay. All right.